What's up, YouTube and Facebook? Uh, very, very excited to be here with you guys as always. I'm gonna go over to the studio and we are gonna get started on today's haircut. So what we're gonna do, I wanna create just a really nice face frame on her. So what I wanna do is break down this first on my thoughts of a face frame. Few different face shapes that work really well with the face frame in my opinion is a round face because it just allows some pieces to kind of come around and make the face look a little less short. So when you look at the length, and you see she's got kind of a good proportion face. I'm sure they make mannequins like that on purpose. So imagine her face was a little bit shorter and a little more round, right? If this hair is long and there's no face frame, it's gonna actually make her jawline seem shorter. If we add some layering in there and little pieces in around the face, it actually brings the face a little bit longer. So that's one reason to have a nice face frame. Here we go. Comb this hair back. I'm gonna work directly off the nose, part the hair. And then to create a face frame, you obviously gotta determine the length that you want these bits to be. Whether they're back or forward, you gotta determine the length. I want it to be right around the jawline. So as I lift a section up, I need to figure out how I can match up the jaw. So if I look at a couple different things, you could bring her hair down. And what I like to do is just take a little piece out at first, come in here, and I can literally just start to work right here, just a soft line right around the face. I can just slide the scissors by half closing right around or just a little bit past the jawline. That gives me those little pieces. But now I want to be able to create elevation so that I have layers throughout the side of the head. I don't want just a face frame. Otherwise I would just slide it all in. I want to now use this as a guide and I want to elevate the hair to lighten it up. When you cut a face frame and you slide in, it makes it the heaviest that it's going to be because there's no elevation in it. If you elevate the hair, you're gonna get a lighter result. So now, how do I section through the top and go about this cut? So what we're going to do is we start in the center parting and I'm going to find the high point of the head, which is right here, and I'm gonna pivot from there. So I'll go from here, pie shape section. So that's section one, section two, section three. All of those will swing around the head and come up to me. Same thing here, section one, section two, section three. All of those sections will swing, come to the center and be cut up top. High point, right? Down, pie shaped section. This is going to swing up. I've got my guideline that I cut from before. And now I'm just gonna come in and I'm going to point cut that line. So I come up above the parting, there's my guide. So I point cut my line. I want this to be shattered. I don't want it to be a blunt line because blunt lines fall heavy. So I soften the line and I want my finger angle to be parallel with the round of the head right here. That's going to allow the hair to fall nice and soft back. If you elevate it, higher than that and you go here, now you're gonna have a more balanced layer that might not fall so much short to long, so it might rest with kind of a, a little bit of a shelf. Now I pivot, I grab another section, all the way down to the hairline, and I bring that up and around to my guide, which is right here. You barely see that new hair because we're not grabbing too much. And then I take my last section, which is right behind the ear, and I comb all that up and around to the center of the head up here. Tiniest bit to cut at that point. Now what's happening when I'm pulling hair from further and further back on the head? As I go section to section, I'm stretching hair further away from my cutting point. What is it doing? It's getting longer. If it's getting longer, we're building length towards the back. So when I go to comb this face frame out, see the little layers in there, they pop through, but you don't see steps in layers because of the elevation that we held it at. Look at the difference when I go to pull this back off of her face. See how this kind of 
lays with a little bit higher feel to it. And the other side just has a bulkier, kind of heavier look. They're both fine. They're both nothing wrong with them. Some people like one length hair, but when you have a lot of hair or um, you're trying to get some of that heaviness away from your face, that is such a great technique to be able to keep it back off of your face. And look at how those pieces lay. Now, when I go to cut the opposite side, I'm gonna stay standing on the same side I was because I wanna stay consistent. So I will keep a little bit of this side for the guide, okay? And then I'm going to take from the high point, my pie shape section on the opposite side, bring that hair up above the forehead, pull it towards the center, see the guide through and point cut the line. It's really important to stay with your elevation above the nose, especially if they're parting it in the middle. If they're parting it on the side, then you're gonna lift this above wherever they part. Pivot, we went here. Now we're gonna go one more. Bring this hair up and over above the nose with the round of the head and cut. Last bit behind the ear, up above the nose, tiny bit to cut. I'll brush it back. Now we got a nice lightweight face frame on both sides. And if you want to wear it forward, you could wear it forward as well. All these little pieces. I want to cut the back. You can add whatever kind of back you want to this cut, but let's just look at her silhouette here. And obviously anytime you're gonna cut somebody's hair, you kind of want to clean up the whole thing. What I'll do is I'll separate, thinking about the FSC digital hair cutting system, right? Because that's what we should be thinking about. And the sectioning, the basic sectioning from that system, I still do this haircut with that thought process in mind. So now what are we gonna do with the back to tie it into the face frame? This to me and where I, I differ from a lot of people I think is that I don't necessarily think that these two things have anything to do with each other. I did the face frame and the front of the hair the way that I wanted it to be. And now I'm gonna take care of the back and I'm gonna do the back the way that I want it to be. Here, I actually want, see where this weight hits right there? I want that to pop a little bit more towards the occipital bone. That doesn't mean that I'm gonna cut layers to touch right here, but it means if I cut a layer that's about this short, it'll pop it up just a little bit and give me a little extra volume. And I think that'll be a little more flattering with the shape. So what we're going to do, we've now determined where we want our vertical line to start. I'm gonna wanna cut about, let's say an inch and a half, two inches off of this length. Now I've got to determine what do I want my horizontal line to be? Do I want to bring everything out and have a little extra weight go to the back? Probably not because my face frame is flowing backwards. So I kind of want the weight that's in this haircut to do the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to over direct. I'm going to split this straight down the center and I'm going to over direct this side up and over, and I'm gonna over direct this side up and over. What that's going to do for me is bring all of the weight. If I take this side and I bring it up here and cut it up here, so let's say I stand now in front of the head, I come up here. I know I wanna take about two inches off of the length. I'm not worried about the hair underneath the occipital bone. It's not even gonna reach up here to where I'm cutting. So I come up here and now I'm going to go two inches and point cut into it. And what that's gonna do by bringing everything up and over to me, over top of this parting where we split the head, this is where we split the head in half, right? This is the front of the head. This is the back of the head. When I bring everything over to me to that split and I cut it, it's gonna push all that length. It's gonna be the shortest point here and it's gonna push all that length to the back center. Just like this, up. I'm gonna go parallel with the floor, my fingers here, and I'm gonna point cut across. I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'll grab a little bit from what I just cut, and then I'll bring up the opposite side over to me and see where I cut it. So I love this because you can see how the layers V, and they get right in here, a little bit longer towards that center. The part that we didn't cut, I can just clean that. So what I'll do is I'll let down everything in the cut. Clean it all up. That's good, nice and healthy. 
All right, so now let's style her up. I'll show you guys kind of how these layers flow through. Do a little activation. And it just keeps looking better. This is hot off the press. I'll show you guys these layers. Look at that. Ooh. Show you guys. And look, this kind of, she's wearing it now over the side because she's just feeling, feeling it that way. Um, you could wear it to either side because it's cut to be nice and lightweight. And I can just move this. Isn't it cool? Like you could just move it around and it, uh, it looks good in like all directions. Thank you so much for being a part of this uh, video and commenting, letting me know what you think, please. Uh, that's, that's all I ask is that you just post in the comments what you think, hit the like button, subscribe to my channels on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, TikTok, all of them, free salon education. And also hit the notification bell because I'm going live almost every single day to teach you guys. Um, and the only way you're gonna get those alerts is if you hit the notification bell. But that's it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.